I must be set free. Okay. Hey everybody and welcome to TechBench. This is the first video on the channel, so what better way to celebrate than by building a monster rig? And as you can see here, this thing fits that build to a T. So I'm gonna talk you through all of the parts in this build, why I'm building it, and then show you the actual build process of me putting it all together. After this, there's gonna be a ton of testing. If any of you know me from my other channel, you'll know that I like to sort of scratch that itch dig beneath the surface, go the extra mile when it comes to looking at hardware and what it can do. So on this channel, not only will I be covering lots of this kind of PC consumer stuff, but I'll also be talking about what you can actually do with it. We'll be looking at tweaks, configurations, overclocking, testing, all of that sort of stuff. Benchmarking is gonna be a big thing because I really wanna see how much I can push this thing. So let's have a quick look through this, quick rationale, then we'll get into the build. So here on my right, I've got the Gigabyte Aorus FO32U2P. This is a 4K OLED 240Hz with DisplayPort 2.1. In terms of the machine itself, I've got a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D, that's 16 cores and 32 threads. Now you might be thinking, why do I need a machine like this? I don't technically need one like this, but it's going to be really useful because not only is it going to give me amazing performance, I'm also building it around being able to do these videos and increase my productivity. So having all the additional extra cores that this CPU is going to give me, along with things like the extra 10 gig NIC that's on here, those are a godsend because it's going to enable me to render quicker, especially when I'm pairing that with a RTX 5090 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but also that 10 gig NIC is going to allow me to use my NAS as well. So enough waffling, let's get into the build process now because I'm really keen to show you guys what this can do. Now, before we can talk about building the PC, we've got to talk about the case. Now, this is the tempered glass version of the Fractal North. It's not the XL version, it's just the normal version. And I bought this because, well, basically I didn't need the XL version. I went with the FE, the Founders Edition of the 5090, so I knew that space was actually not too much of a premium. And this was gonna be perfectly fine for what I need. Now, I have got some crappy fans that I have lying around. I will be replacing those with Noctua fans. I do have my server rack over there, and if you watch on my other channel, I will be changing over my NAS, and that will free up the requisite number of Noctua fans that I need to stick in here. Now, you don't need Noctua fans, obviously, but this is a premium build, so I do want to put some premium fans in. I do find that I've never had a problem with Noctua. They're really silent and they're really high performing, so it makes sense to put it in here, really. But for this build, I'm just going to leave in these basic fans just to make sure everything powers up and works, and then probably within the next couple of weeks, I'll be taking the fans out and I'll be upgrading those. Now, my first impressions of the Fractal North... Yep, yeah, seems like a decent case. I did do a lot of homework before this to make sure everything would fit, but also to try and find out what is the best on the market for kind of a budget. And this seemed to fit that bill. Now, the only comment I would have on this is it does feel a little bit flimsy, but to be honest, pretty much every case I've had ever since about 20 years ago, when they actually seem to build them properly, they've all seemed flimsy. So this is kind of not really unique to Fractal, but if you have a look on the rear here, you can see on this mesh that there is quite a lot of flex there. Um, might be good, maybe another half a mil, but again, that's obviously gonna come into the price of this device and impact that. Other than that, really, it's kind of got a nice dust filter on the top, which we can take off and have a look at. Um, but really, it's a case of just getting stuck in now. I am gonna be playing around with the fan configuration in this device because when I went onto the Noctua website, they advised to have three fans on the front pushing in. They wanted one pushing down in the top, one exhausting out the top and one exhausting out the back, which should create a nice positive pressure within the case. And that's helped with this tempered glass front as well. They do do a mesh version of this case, but for our thermals, it definitely performs better with a glass from all the testing that I've seen. I am keen to have a play with that. I don't have quite the right 
equipment to be measuring temperatures coming out etc but i'll obviously be able to benchmark performance and thermals of the components inside the machine once that's up and running now the first thing we're going to do with this is obviously put a motherboard into it once i put the fans in and the motherboard i chose to use for this build is the asus proart x870e creator wi-fi now you might be thinking why did i get this board good question well i'm trying to be a creator as best i can and this actually comes with a 10 gigabit nic on the back now if you're thinking what's that well usually the old-fashioned motherboards you usually come with a one gig maybe a two and a half these days but with a 10 gig NIC, it's going to give me basically one gigabyte per second up to my NAS, which makes the whole video editing process much snappier. It means that I can store and edit things on my NAS, which has got 100 terabytes of storage. That's really beneficial and even means that I can use multiple devices to access this content simultaneously. Now, it's not going to be the best overclocker, etc., but I've done some homework and the RAM that I've got, which is running at 6000 with a CL of 26, that's going to be supported by this board, which is more than enough. Obviously, this supports as well the Ryzen 9000 chip, and it's also got enough PCIe slots, albeit I'm going back a few generations now when you used to be able to get boards with six or seven slots. This only has three slots. Now, because I've got that 10 gig NIC here, that's actually pretty good because it means I can stick the GPU in here. I can connect something like a capture card in this one here. And then if I wanted to, I could put something else in that last one. It means that I don't have to waste one of those PCI slots on a 10 gig NIC. Now I want to leave in all the little errors and mistakes that I make along my journey and that's going to be across this channel. I'm not perfect, people do make things wrong. So what I want to discuss here is I've now got the CPU installed, the cooler, but there is an issue. Now this does technically fit, this is the proper fan that's supposed to go with this. However if I do install it, it sits too proud when I try and put it in the uh, Fractal North case. Now, even if I got the Excel model, I don't think that would fit. So I'm going to take a gamble here, and I've actually got a Noctua F12, which is specifically a radiator fan. Now, if I install this one, I shouldn't have those issues with the RAM clearance. So I'm hoping that I can install this NF12 and get similar performance, albeit it's probably slightly suboptimal, but I'm going to bet that having just two fans in general is going to perform better than one. And even from some cursory reading online, actually just having one CPU cooler, it usually only hits the fan temperatures by about one or two degrees. Obviously, I want to test that and have a bit of fun around there. So I'm going to stick the NF12 on there and I'm going to continue the build. Now here I've got the M.2 drive and I haven't got the one with the heatsink because basically this motherboard comes with a more than adequate heatsink and it's pretty cool it's got a quick release system as well so I've simply popped that off I'm now going to peel off the protective covers for the thermal pad and hopefully I should just be able to slot this in now push it down and we should be off to the races I'll show you what that looks like in a minute now hopefully with a satisfying click sounds pretty good that's now secure now this is the two terabyte model i'm used to having sort of a one terabyte model so i did upgrade to two two does come with some minor performance improvements and i didn't think as though the four terabyte model was required and it was significantly more expensive as i said i am going to be using this paired with the 10 gigabit nic on the back to store most of the footage and editing material on my nas so now we've got everything in the case. We've got the motherboard and the heatsink that's all in. This was pretty easy to get up and running. I've got the front panel off as well because I'm going to swap over some fans. But now we're pretty much on to getting the PSU installed at the bottom, get that cables all wired up neatly in the back, and then stick the GPU on, and hopefully we're ready for that first boot. So now with all of the kind of wiring done, I wanted to make sure that I boot this thing up first before I go any further, changing out fans, that sort of thing. So the bit I've been most apprehensive about, I'm gonna install the GPU now and get that plugged in. Obviously this thing uses that new 12 volt, so I'm expecting a big mushroom cloud and a fireball, but fingers crossed I won't. So here goes the GPU installation. Now after some fun and games, I have managed to get the GPU in. I couldn't manage to get this bracket in. It does look like the retainer bracket on the GPU is ever so slightly larger than two, or there's just a kind of minor offset in the manufacture of this. 
Well, pretty much now everything is in and ready to go. So fingers crossed, we can boot this up and hopefully we see something on the screen. Regarding the screen, well, we've got something a little bit special. Let's go. So hopefully now with everything plugged in, everything connected, and the monitor here, really excited to see what this looks like. I literally haven't turned it on. This is the first time I'm gonna do it. So here goes, I'm gonna flick the power supply on. No blue smoke. And then I'm gonna hit the power button. Fingers crossed, this works. That looks good, I'm hearing noises. I'm gonna hit the keyboard just to go into the BIOS. And it looks like the monitor's turned off. Can I see a power button? And after a bit of jiggery pokery, I cannot profess that worked the first time. We have actually now got to the machine being on and getting display out through the GPU. So I'm going to wrap the video here. I think this has been a successful build. Obviously going to change out the fans, put the covers on, all of that sort of stuff, tidy everything up, and I'll get this machine booted. I'll get it installed with Windows and Linux, and then we'll move on to actually configuring this device, tweaking it, overclocking it, doing all those sorts of things. Really excited to get stuck into this. Kickstart a new channel. What better way? Please let me know in the comments what you think about this. I definitely am going to invest in better lighting, better sound, and some autofocus, so I appreciate Bear with me. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.